Hello. Hope everyone's doing great out there. Um, I got some positive feedback on these uh, explained videos. And so I'm gonna walk through another form that I like to make. Um, I call them kind of landscaped wavy rim, I don't know, sort of situation uh, with these bowls, okay? Um, I'm gonna walk you through how I make uh, my bowls and kind of what I'm focusing on, uh, the tools I use, and sort of the uh, thought process in making the bowls. Um, yeah, as far as especially for functional pieces. Um, so away we go. I've had less coffee than the last video, so uh, this should be a little bit hopefully easier to understand. So anyways, wheel is ready to roll. Uh, I'm working with today about a pound and a half of clay. Um, it's all wedged up again. Um, as with the previous video, uh, I am terrible at wedging. I just don't spend the time to do it. So I'm gonna cone this clay a few times to get out any air bubbles. You might actually hear some of them kind of pop as we go. Um, and when I'm coning, I think, I think my hand is in frame, but Basically what's happening inside is I'm taking the ceiling away, putting the ceiling back on, and I'm just working that clay up and down from a cone shape, back down into sort of this biscuit kind of situation. Um, so with bowls, first thing, uh, when I'm dropping the well, uh, typically if I'm making cups or a lot of different forms actually, I'll drop the well and I'll pull my thumbs to my palms uh, and try and be parallel with the wheel head here. With bowls, as I'm dropping the well and pulling my thumbs to my palms, I'm trying to ease up on the pressure a little bit and just start that little concaved bottom of the bowl shape right off the bat. So dropping the well like that. And as I move out, as I'm moving out, my thumbs are kind of lightening up a little bit to just start that bowl shape just a tiny bit. I open it up just a little bit here um, because the first pull, I just want to bring some of that clay up. I'm going to leave the walls pretty thick, but you're going to see in a second, in order to achieve that sort of landscapey, wonky rim, um, I'm going to do a, a little stretching of the clay. I know a few different, I, I know a ton of different potters that do this a bunch of different ways. This is just how I do it. Um, so I'm going to start off by doing a really pretty kind of non-invasive pull. I'm not really getting too carried away with it. Um, at this point though, because these are gonna be functional, um, I do wanna spend a fair amount of time compressing the rim. And I'm gonna do it now because after I stretch the clay, it's gonna be tricky to compress the rim downstream from there. So just taking some attention to compressing the rim a bit, and then I'm gonna stop the wheel. Um, I'm gonna get my hands really wet and I'm gonna take my fingers here and I'm just gonna stretch the walls of the clay up a little bit. I'm really eyeballing it. I usually do it from three different points. And what I've found is the less I sort of psychoanalyze what I'm doing, the better it looks. So if I just kind of zone and just kind of pull the clay a little bit, just like that, stretching it out. I'm trying not to thin out the rim too much and stretch the rim too much. I'm just moving my hands back and forth and just softly stretching that rim. Now what I like to do to sort of achieve a defined rim on this, because this is, this is a little sloppy and sort of uh, uh, clunky, I'm going to take this wooden rib tool that's a little bit softer than the metal one. It doesn't really cut the clay. It's just sort of going to, and I'm just going to let it ride on the rim to flatten it out a bit. Sometimes I'll even kind of pump with my with my hand a little bit to sort of go with the different thicknesses like that okay um that edge is pretty strong and as i do a couple pulls from here it tends to want to fold over and so what i like to do is just take the sponge and soften it and just kind of round those edges just a touch okay now at this point i'm going to do a pull i'm not going for going for the gold here i'm just going to get that bowl shape started. And if you notice too, it was pretty subtle, but I slowed the wheel down a little bit. 
Um, I've been trying to throw pots slower. I found that, especially with my non-symmetrical or asymmetrical pots, um, I found that I like the results better if I slow down. If I, if I throw really fast, things tend to recenter, especially if you've done this uh, quite a bit. Um, your hands will just kind of recenter clay or re-even things out if you do it really fast. If I do it slow, so I'm slowing the wheel down, I'm grabbing the clay gently, and I'm just compressing and pulling up, and I like leaving those really thick throw lines on the outside too. For these specific forms, um, I want these to be kind of just interesting to look at and have kind of a lot of different features, and especially when you hold it from the outside, I want it to just feel interesting. So I like leaving some thicker uh, throw lines on there as well. Um, so from here on out, now I'm gonna switch to using this metal rib tool. Um, this rib tool and, and pretty much everything, uh, at least here in Minnesota, and I know that they are national, um, but there's a company that I uh, work with called Continental Clay. Um, I think these, I don't know who the manufacturer of these are. I'll check next time and I'll keep you in the loop. But uh, with bowls especially, I like to primarily just focus on the inside surface of the bowl. And I found that the outside sort of just takes care of itself. Um, I'm not really too concerned with the curve on the outside because I, I'm gonna push the clay, I'm gonna actually push the rib tool um, into, the inter, in, into the inner surface of the bowl. And my outside fingers, I'm just gonna trace the clay against that curve from the outside. And I'm really paying attention to making sure that the slope inside the bowl is nice and smooth and one sort of continuous uh, surface so that especially when, you know, when eating out of it or that kind of thing, you're not getting hung up on any weird ridges or anything like that. So I'm gonna hold this tool nice and controlled. My pinky's kind of on the outside so I can sort of bend it a little bit. And I'm just gonna start up top at the rim here, work my way down to the bottom, let this edge be the absolute kind of middle inside of the bowl. And then I'm gonna push that clay in and ride it back up the ridge like that. So I'm all the way down at the bottom. I'm gonna slow the wheel down. And then I'm lining my outside finger onto that rib tool ridge. And I'm just pushing the clay up against it. Really gently really slowly just like that um, I had the tendency to over tinker and I'm sure some of you out there have experienced where you just fuss with a pot too much and it kind of just you, you get you get a little carried away and go overboard um, as I go back in for another pull uh, I'm really pretty good at over tinkering but uh, in, as a general rule, quit while you're ahead. Um, there's a little puddle of water in here. I want to get rid of that. And then I like focusing on um, just putting little details, little tool marks on the inside. And so I'm going to use this smaller rib tool and push down. I'm going to reinforce the bottom of the pot, or the inside bottom. And then I'm just going to wiggle that thing around a little bit and give it a little bit of character. Um, and, oh, and then, again, since this rim is landscaped and a little wobbly, I like using this little wet piece of, I think it's leather, and just draping it over the side to soften that rim a little bit, just like that, because it is hopefully going to be able to be used. And then, wooden rib tool, undercut slightly. I don't want to push in too much, because as mentioned before in the plate video, if I push too much, it'll push material back up and create a little ridge inside there. And then stop the wheel, puddle of water at noon, grab my garrote, pull it through, and then slide it off just like that, okay? Um, hopefully you can kind of see the inside of what I was going for there, but I like that landscaped, that sort of uh, asymmetrical look. Um, I'm gonna fly through one more. I just wanna do it in kind of real time so you can get a sense for the rhythm uh, in so much of a rhythm as I do have when throwing pots. So wheels cleaned off, another pound and a half of clay, smash it on there. This one has a 
fair amount of fun lumps in it, so we're gonna have to cone it a little bit more. And you might actually hear an air bubble pop here in a second. I could probably just get better at wedging clay, but whatever. So dropping the well, opening it up and just kind of tapering off. Doing my first pull, just kind of straightening those walls out, get them to be the same thickness and then compressing that rim. Stretching the walls a little bit. Just kind of eyeballing the spots. You could sit and measure it all out, but that's just, again, I found that uh, the more I am mind, like almost conscious of what I'm doing and the more attention I pay to it, the more forced it looks. So I kind of like just winging it. Um, and then of course with everything, you just make a lot of pots and eventually one or two of them you won't completely hate. So grab and play gently, moving up slow, softening that rim, a little bit of water, I'm gonna slow this wheel down. And my inside hand, as I'm doing pulls, um, my inside hand is tracing the general idea of what the inside, so if you had an existing bowl in your hands and you were holding it and you were tracing that inside curve with your, which, you know, whichever hand, whether you're righty or lefty, um, that's what I'm picturing in my mind's eye when I'm doing the pulls. I'm kind of, kind of tracing the inside curve of the bowl I'm trying to make. I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, okay, so done a couple pulls and now I'm going to get involved with this whole situation. So pushing that rib tool down in there, slowing the wheel down, and then just pushing the clay up against the tool to get that curve that I'm going for. And to get that nice clean exterior. You might be able to see too, um, when I'm in the middle of poles, my head's kind of searching around a little bit. I'm sort of toggling between looking at the inside surface, figuring out what my hand's doing, and then also trying, at least for me, I try and not really focus on the piece. I'm sort of trying to look through it, if that kind of makes sense. I don't know, for, for whatever reason, that works for me to just kind of get like the big picture as opposed to staring at a specific spot. Um, the way I can equate it, if any of you are, uh, old enough or whatever to remember there were those like magic eye pictures where it was like a weird pattern you had to stare through it and then some some 3d thing would come out at you that's kind of what i'm doing uh that's sort of the foot like what my eyes are doing when i'm throwing pots um so here we go gonna add a little sort of tool mark on the inside little swirl situation grab my murky piece of leather here soften the rim a bit undercut just slightly because I want enough material on there to be able to trim a foot into the bottom and then wire tool, slide it through, lift it off the wheel. Not as landscaped as I would like, but you know, it's getting there. So anyways, uh, again, thank you per usual for checking this out. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep uploading these. I'm going to keep kind of explaining some of the forms that I make and the reasons that I make the decisions that I do. Um, as always, like, subscribe, share. Throw some stuff down in the comments. Let me know if there are any forms that I make that you would like for me to walk through and explain. And then I will be doing some uh, explanation videos for uh, trimming here shortly as well. So until then, you're all the best. I appreciate you. And yeah, take care.